It doesn't look much like winter in Germany's central uplands. Here, skiers, snowboarders, and above all, ski resort operators are suffering from the mild temperatures. Other ski areas have shut down in recent years, but in Winterberg in the Sauerland, they're expanding their winter sports activities and trying to keep one step ahead of climate change. Snow is thawing during the high season. Still, all of the ski lifts are in operation and all of the slopes are open. Winterberg is fully booked. It's one of the most popular ski areas north of the Alps. But unlike in the Alps, white winters can't be taken for granted here. At 670 meters above sea level, Winterberg normally lies right on the climatic snow line. And studies show this line could rise even higher in the years to come. Nico Brinkman operates several ski facilities in Winterberg. His family has long lived from tourism and provides employment for around 50 people. And how does it look? No problems? Are the guests happy? That's how it should be. Good. As far as the facilities are concerned, Winterberg is certainly one of the most modern ski areas in Germany. We've also invested in increasing our snowmaking capacities to be able to offer skiing for two to three months a year. Some 360 snow cannons stand at the ready. At temperatures of minus two degrees Celsius or below, they can make snow and secure the resort's operations throughout a normal winter. But it's three degrees above zero in Winterberg, too warm to operate the snow cannons. So on a few of the slopes, they're employing what's called a snow factory. It can produce snow at four degrees Celsius. But environmental activists criticize the vast amounts of energy and water it consumes. The resort operators won't say much about that. And we can only film what's on view to the public, the snow guns out of which fine snow is shot, but not the technology behind them. But one thing's crystal clear, artificial snow secures jobs here. If we didn't have it, we could have kissed the Christmas season goodbye. We definitely wouldn't have had any snow, because the temperatures never dipped to the minus two degrees the snow cannons need. Karl Heinz Thielke runs one of Winterberg's four ski schools. He employs 70 ski instructors. He hires some of them specially from abroad because people from many different countries learn how to ski here. And his ski school is constantly expanding. The trend towards learning to ski and going to ski school continues unabated. And due to the numerous snow cannons, we can finally be assured there will be snow. I can assume that I'll be able to run my ski school for 60 to 80 days. That's something I couldn't do before. These days, his ski school is attracting lots of guests from the Netherlands. It's a three-hour drive from Winterberg to the Dutch border. For many, this is their first time skiing. <laughs> the nature is beautiful. Yeah, and there are mountains, so that's that's good to ski. Yeah, yeah. It looks very nice. It looks. Uh, I didn't expect so much snow, and uh, I didn't expect so much uh, elevators and so much people. The school holidays have started in the Netherlands. It's the weekend, and there's enough snow. Most of the businesses here make over half their yearly income in winter. When things get too busy, the Luke family take refuge in their trailer. They're in no hurry to hit the slopes because they camp here long term. 
Their trailer is cold weatherproof, though winters here are never really harsh. It's gotten much milder. There's a lot less snow than in recent years. Often we were half submerged in snow. The retired miner has been coming here for close to 20 years. It's just a two-hour trip from his home city of Duisburg. But soon he may only be able to hike here because temperatures keep rising and the hordes of tourists are taking their toll on the slopes. Nico Brinkmann is also concerned. Rising temperatures are eating away at the blanket of snow covering the slopes during what should be the most profitable period of the year. At the moment, it's still good for skiing. But if it rains, as is forecast, it could be that we won't be able to run some of the ski lifts due to the lack of snow cover. We hope that it won't come to that, but it could happen. The fight to save every square meter of snow on the slopes really begins in earnest when the tourists have returned to the ski lodge for the night. Johannes Anta and his colleagues prepare the slopes for the next day with their snow groomers. It's pretty windy up here. Can I come down number seven? Yeah, come down. Okay. Today it was really full, so the ruts are quite deep. So you need to go over it a lot. That can take four hours for one driver. Software that works with data collected by GPS lets Johannes know just how much snow lies beneath his snow groomer. 70 to 80 centimeters. That's okay. No new snow has fallen for weeks. There's only what's been produced by the snow factory. This is the snow from the snow factory. You can move it around easily because it's quite sandy. It rolls right before the blade and it binds together pretty well once we have gone over it. And then you have a really good ski slope. While Johannes does his rounds, the tourists enjoy some après-ski fun. The next morning, the party's over, on the slopes as well. Overnight, the rains came and melted most of the snow, leaving grass and mud in their wake. But, undaunted, some winter sports enthusiasts gather on the slopes where skiing and snowboarding is still possible. At least the slopes Johannes Ante groomed the night before are still open. However, Nico Brinkmann's slopes are pretty much snow-free. The ski rental business he runs on the side is also deserted. Even one off day can cost him several hundred euros. Last night it rained, unfortunately, and now it's raining again. You really notice the sudden change because many day visitors simply stay away. So we have lots of equipment on hand and we can't rent it out. Temperatures are forecast to remain above zero for the next few days. So there's little hope things will improve. More and more ski lifts are shutting down. But Julian Pape, Winterberg's top weather expert, is looking on the bright side. The geographer runs his own weather service just for this region and operates about 40 survey stations. 
He believes the current mild weather has less to do with climate change and global warming than with natural fluctuations which have always existed. Here we live in a climate zone that's strongly influenced by the Atlantic Ocean. What happens on the Atlantic has a big effect on us. That means in winters where the Atlantic is calm, we'll have cold winters. He doesn't foresee warm weather putting an end to winter sports in the central uplands anytime soon. We don't expect a repeat of this winter. It's an exception, with warm and changeable phases. But next winter could be significantly colder and snowier. That's what we expect will happen. And many in Winterberg share his optimism, including Nico Brinkmann. Still, he's been making provisions for years. Along with the ski lifts and ski rentals, he also runs a hostel. The bookings from schools and clubs mean he's no longer reliant on holidayers who stay away if the snow does. A mild winter like this one would be fatal if you didn't have a second source of income. But most people here do. Sure, it's not nice, and here and there it can be problematic when a winter like this happens. He's already preparing for spring, when the ski slopes are transformed into a mountain bike and adventure park. That also helps to make him less reliant on snow. It used to be that a bad winter would bring you to the brink of bankruptcy. Luckily, now we've brought in our base, so a bad winter isn't quite so critical. But sure, when you're self-employed and everything's at your own risk, a winter like this can give you a sleepless night or two. But now, if he has another sleepless night, he can just go night skiing. That also brings in more income and more visitors in the short ski season. It's things like this that are helping people in Winterberg keep their faith in winter sports in times of climate change. <laughs>